Hey guys, last weekend I attended Foz Asia. Uh, it's, a, it's a yearly event where it brings all the open source geeks uh, to Asia. And uh, in this year it was in Singapore, half an hour away from me in, um, in the science center. And the key, the key note speaker for me, or whatever, the key speaker for me was Leonard Pottering, the famous founder and developer of System D. So, um, I'm also I'm 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 gonna be honest with you guys. I am a System D fanboy, even though I am part of the cyclist community who strongly believe that System D is uh, overarching and too complex and all the rest of it. But I'm I'm I I am um, I'm honored to to say that I've, I met Lennart and um, and he's a nice guy and. Um, He's traveling with a friend around Asia, and that's also wins plus points for me because uh, you know he made an effort to see the world, and um, and he's also a damn good developer. And he had he shared a lot of interesting things. He gave a little talk. I'll link to that uh, if it's available. It should have been recorded by engineers at SG, and he um, well he told me some things I didn't know, and this is what the video is about. And let me share them with you. So let's begin. I didn't know about this uh, list dependencies uh, command. You probably have heard of it. And that shows you the services, I guess, uh, leading up to my web server here. Uh, sorry about my terminal, it's a bit strange. Um, but that's something I learned. What's the next thing? Um, oh, system D resolve. Now, this is really interesting, actually, because. Um, I actually didn't really know this, but um, it was hinted to me uh, with, this, with, with the glibc bug um, a few months back, whereby most apps, most network apps, have their own sort of DNS cache, and that that obviously I think um, leads to a whole bunch of problems, including security ones. And they are, and, and system D resolve basically fixes this, um, and you. I guess if you're writing an application on Linux, you should be um, integrating with SD-Resolve or something like that. And you get to use SystemD's resolver and DNS cache. And obviously, it would be a, it's a lot more efficient if you're using SystemD ResolveD. Um, it implements a whole bunch of things like LNNR, which I'm not even sure what it is, DNSSEC for... Uh, and some other stuff. So, um, so now there's like a command like to replace um, dig. Like this, this in the system D world is dig system D dash resolve, and that's one of my my servers. And um, I think there's even some other interesting stuff like statistics. You can you can see. You can see statistics of the the system D result D, which if I think if you're an Arch user like myself, you're probably already running it. Um, but anyway, I, I actually quite like that. I quite like that. I think it's going to solve some issues. Um, what else did he mention? I think he mentioned some system D USB D, so for for managing USB devices. Um, uh, let's go to my next page here. Oh, he mentions. Um, the way like maybe a shell script interacts with journal CTL. So that's one, I guess that's the system D version of logger. Uh, of course you can, the journal CTL, there's a whole, a whole bunch of more fields you could use. Uh, I was speaking to another friend who attended Fosasia, Chris Lamb, and we were just thinking to ourselves, instead of like the whole sh bash minus X, you know, shell debugging kind of way of doing it, maybe it would be cool to be able to leverage journal CTL metadata and, um, and you know, you can maybe debug shell scripts by line number it, or, or see where things went wrong in the journal by line number, which would be, which would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be nice. He talked a lot about journal CTL actually, because um, there's like an hour devoted to it, and he appeased, he 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 put my concerns at rest about, you know, the the normal things. What happens if it's corrupted? And he he was saying he argued that journal CTL should get better over time to read things. 
he, sh he was showing how you can copy the files out and where they were stored and he was saying how they're combined and things like that he made everything a little bit more clearer in my mind which is good and um, also gtctl minus e is something i didn't even know i think that just that just quickly shows the last umpteen things to be honest i use journal ctl minus b minus f to see what's going on half the time and um, what else uh, let's go to the next little thing. I I, I want to keep it. Um, well, I knew about etc system D. I mean, he argued etc system D is where the admin stuff goes. I.e., I'm running my own system. That's where my stuff goes. User of system D is where the um, package files goes. Uh, and and but I didn't know about run system D. That's like the runtime. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me because if you. If you reload or restart um, a service, doesn't effectively nuke run? I don't know. Anyway, I thought that was interesting and new. So I thought I'd just mention that. And obviously, you can, it's like um, the, um, what do you call it? User lib system D can can get overridden by the etc system D, and I think run system D overrides etc system system D. So, um, but if you're concerned uh, of what's overriding what, then system D delta will tell you what's being overridden. But there was some caveat that it doesn't deal well with drop-ins at the moment. Uh, okay, that's that. I'm trying to keep this short. Oh, um, I. I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've for many years now I've been avoiding DBus, and DBus has kind of been forced down my throat, and I understand now why a bit more. I understand why because he explained um, how you know the system D service files themselves use what notify and DBus, you know these type equals DBus, and I think I think well still don't like DBus, but. This is the way that system D communicates and and figures out it basically communicates so that you know what's happening on the system and the dbus interface is a bit horrible. He made an interesting case, Leonard made an interesting case whereby you can maybe map bus CTL um what's it called um you can maybe bus map bus CTL. You can see this interface like bus CTL monitor org dot free desktop could be the ho he he was basically making a strange case where you can map it onto a RESTful interface. So so that org thing would probably be the host name and then the other APIs that it exposes are somehow the path or the uh, and the interface would be maybe the 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 HTTP arguments or something like that. It wasn't a great argument, and the mapping was pretty bad. But um, but after listening to his arguments, which I'm poorly re reproducing here, I, I I felt like I can live with this now. You know, I can uh, I understand the reasons and kind of, and now I can live with Dbus. Oh gosh. The suckless people watching this will probably laugh in my face, but it's just a you know. Is there any real choice? Uh, is there a better expression? Uh, another thing I didn't know about was system D run. I kind of knew about it, but I didn't know about it. I, he gave a good example somehow. It's just the way you can run something in a particular container using system D run. Uh, yeah, I just want to keep this short. Um, I we also talked. I also asked him about you know things like um, the system D stuff where you can limit CPU, limit memory, private tab. I was I was wondering if that could help me in my use case and to control my browser because I'm, the thing I'm concerned about, especially in web converger, is that browsers can take you know open up a whole a lot of tabs. Browsers can take too much memory, too much CPU, and basically grind a system to halt. And unfortunately. System D services can't help me for that particular use case. It can help in particular use cases like where Apache has lots of threads, but MySQL only has a couple. It, it can it can basically 
make Apache and MySQL, which are, which are working together, work better together so that Apache somehow doesn't starve MySQL of uh, resources that it needs to run. And uh, another interesting thing that was was came up was like, if you update a package, can systemd, instead of using some crazy tool like need restart on Debian, can systemd just restart that process? And Lennart was saying that this is an extremely complicated problem, it's really difficult to do, you can't, on every single level from Linux to, to the browser, this is extremely hard to do. Uh, like all these hot patching things of Linux don't really work, except especially when like a data structure changes. And yeah, you, I mean, just imagine trying to restart a browser. That's ne never, never a very uh, good idea. So basically, he said, uh, and the and you know, you just have to restart the damn process. I mean, not restart, reboot the machine to be safe. Which it wasn't what I was wanting to hear. It wasn't what I wanted to hear, but. After hearing the arguments, it's it, rebooting the machine is sadly your best option when you once when you're upgrading your machine. So I'm I'm having to bear that in mind when uh, coordinating and maintaining my own um, stuff now. So that's it. I'm trying to keep it short because I did make an earlier video which was just so long and boring, and now this will hopefully interest you. If you have your own system D questions, I, I can try and help them. Um, try to answer them for you. Um, oh, another thing about general general CTL. I asked a question like, how does it get copied out? What's the interface? Because our syslog D uses the used UDP or something to get logs out. But Lennart was saying that the um, the way general CTL will export uh, its data to another machine is through web protocols, HTTP, which I thought was quite interesting. So I think this facilitates both pull and push type. Um, uh, ways of getting out uh, your data and he also mentioned that journal CTLs has, has like a cursor which is like a restful paging mechanism so that you you don't get you only get the the stuff that you're interested in or the 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 the, uh, the stuff since you last pulled or, or or pushed or something like that yeah um i i, I thought i i'm, I'm not gonna lie it's just he has I think systemd already kills Windows and Mac OS X right now, and the future is looking really, really good. I'm I'm looking forward to playing with systemd USB. I'm looking forward to maybe using journal CTL. I'm looking forward to just get more entangled with systemd technology, which which sounds ridiculous, but at the same time, it makes everything so slick and integrated, and more manageable and and. It kind of just, I don't know, it just seems like this crazy choices you have to make, either integrated or or simple and kind of a mess. But I'm going down this integrated system D route and, uh, and so far I think it's only helped me and the things I want to achieve with my computer. So I hope it will help you too. Thank you for watching.